Hilda's new movie just dropped, and you know I gotta make a video about it, so let's not waste any time. My name is Deep Cut, welcome back to Cartoon Universe, and today we're going to be talking about how Hilda became a troll, why she was able to turn human again, and all the fun new lore we learned about trolls from this movie. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and if you haven't watched the movie yet, please go do that, as we'll be talking about all sorts of spoilers here. Now, before we get into exactly what happened to Hilda, I just want to take the time to let you guys know that this is not the end of Hilda's story, and the show has been renewed renewed for a third and final season. This is a bit surprising considering just how climactic this movie was, not just in terms of its epic scope, but also thematically. The series of course opened with Hilda living out in the wilderness and learning about the history of giants that once used to live on the same planet. They lived pretty peaceful lives, but one day the humans started to appear, and the giants realized that they could not live the way they used to without hurting the humans and destroying their homes. Because of this, the giants all decided to travel to planets elsewhere, jumping into space leaving behind only one giant who was standing guard and the woman he loved that wouldn't leave without him. When these two giants were reunited with the help of Hilda and launched off into space, they ended up destroying Hilda's own home, which gave her a new perspective on the problem she was causing for the even tinier species, the elves, prompting her to move to Trollberg, learning from the giants that she can exist in a space that doesn't endanger the lives of the elves. This became important because, as we learned in this movie, Hilda's new home was still affecting the local species, in this case the trolls, who originally lived in Trollberg. Trollberg basically turns Hilda into the kid's version of Attack on Titan, a city with giant walls that are meant to keep out these giant monster trolls. Unlike the giants of Attack on Titan, who are only active in the day, trolls of course turn to stone when exposed to light, and therefore only wander around at night. Until recently, the trolls were seen as sort of the enemy to humanity. While you don't really know why the people of Trollberg decided to settle down in the middle of troll territory specifically, they had no idea why this land was important to the trolls and it assumed that all the wildlife of the area would move on once the humans occupied this space, trolls included. Trolls are of course very sensitive to the sound of bells, and the people of Trollberg eventually realized that they could use bells as a second line of defense after their walls. Small bells cause some pretty extreme pain, something Hilda experienced firsthand now that she has been turned into a troll, but the larger bells that surround Trollberg make it impossible for trolls to even get close to the city. Until this movie, trolls were believed to be pretty animalistic, but it turns out the trolls have a pretty comprehensive language, but one only they can understand, though after being transformed into a troll, Hilda is able to understand this language even when she is turned human again. It was believed that trolls as a whole were also interested in eating or attacking humans, but this proved not to be the case either. While some trolls are certainly hostile towards humans more than others, and all of them are willing to attack when they feel the need to, many trolls prefer not to have violence against humans at all. In fact, in this movie, we learn that there was once a mountain king who united most of the trolls, with his goal being to have an army of the trolls all attack the city at once. While this was said to unite more trolls than ever before, enough trolls stood in opposition to this that the mountain king was defeated. This mountain king was a particularly large troll, and special measures had to be taken to stop him from trying to start another revolt against the humans. To prevent this, his magical red eye was removed and he was forced into a cave with large bells hanging over the entrance. Anytime he would try to leave, the sound of the bells so close to him would send him backwards into the cave it seems. One thing we learned about trolls was that they have the power to open up caves in the mountainside, leading to a larger inner network of caves where the trolls live many having peaceful lives inside with ample access to things like water. Because they can open and close these points, humans have a hard time finding out where the trolls hide, as their entrances are of course hidden in this way. It is unclear why the Mountain King was unable to simply use this power to open an entrance in the back of the cave, considering that the baby troll Baba was able to do this even in their human form. It is possible that it only works in places where the walls are thin between the outer world and the inner cave system, with the Mountain King's prison cave being chosen specifically because it would not have that kind of exit in the back. The act of imprisoning someone, as dark and disappointing as it is, shows the trolls have something of a culture, and a sense of morality that comes with it, even if they don't always agree. The one thing the movie highlights quite a bit is that humans are the same way, some good, some bad, all just doing what they think is right. While traditionally trolls were known for hoarding great treasures that humans desired, such as gold and jewels, the modern trolls tend to find items that they specifically enjoy for one reason or another, including soft things like towels or human things like teacups and the like. 
We also learned quite a bit about troll families, in that the trolls themselves tend to create their own makeshift families. Trolls do not have mothers and fathers the way humans do, but instead, all trolls grow from the ground, and if Baba and her adoptive mother are any indication, they form bonds more naturally and learn to take care of each other instead of being born into each other's lives. All trolls, however, do have a sense of belonging to a singular mother to this species, the largest troll of all. Like the giants from Season 1, this giant troll laid down for a long sleep and was surprised to find that she'd become buried in dirt, with people not even noticing she is there. Because of that, humans started building Trollberg there. If the humans had settled anywhere else, trolls probably would have left them alone, but even from underground, the trolls can all hear their mother calling to them in an almost psychic way, drawing them closer to Trollberg and making the humans feel that they have to fight the trolls to defend the city, which ultimately caused the trolls to act violently towards humans in return and the animosity between the two species to begin. It turns out that this was the reason why the Mountain King wanted to wage war against the humans and destroy Trollberg, so they could all be reunited with their mother. Mother who even the babies born without having met all feel an affinity for. He manages to trick Hilda into setting him free, and we see him engage in a battle not just with humans, but with other trolls, including another giant who seems to be his brother. While their family units are not built on blood, as we mentioned earlier, it would appear that these two giant trolls were the biggest ones other than the mother troll, and likely developed a bond interacting with each other and trying to help the mother before she became buried. This good brother, it seems, understood the mother's will, and it's revealed that she could have gotten up at any point to be reunited with her children, and only refused to do so because she did not want to destroy the city of humans that developed on top of her. In the end, Hilda and Frida are able to explain this to the people of Trollberg, and the evil brother is defeated, something that the good brother is seen grieving about despite their fighting. Because of this, peace is made with the trolls, and once a year they are welcomed into Trollberg in order to be near their mother and experience her magic, which makes plants grow on them. As far as why Hilda was changed into a troll, there aren't many answers in the movie or even in the comic book it was based off of. It is written off pretty simply as being a spell involving a changeling, and one that Frida's own magic seemed unable to fix. The spell is rooted in a mother's love, as noted in the film, and was done so by Baba's mother. Not to terrorize anyone, but because Baba, despite being a troll, was considered rather soft, and her mother worried she would not do well in the world of trolls, which can be rough and brutal. Hilda, on the other hand, despite being a soft human, loved living out in the wild, and moving to Trollberg was one of the biggest disappointments of her life. And with Baba's mother recognizing this, she cast the spell in order to have the two switch species. Hilda learns a lot through this experience, as she perceives humans as doing things they don't like, such as having school or jobs, but realizes that a lot of humans don't just flourish in that environment, but perhaps even like it, and that Hilda is the odd one out when it comes to the human race. Hence why Baba's mother made the switch, thinking it would ultimately make both the children more happy, not just Baba. The magic of a mother's love of course meant that a mother's love could undo the spell, and in the end, Hilda and Baba both returned to their original forms after being reunited with their own mothers. But Baba's mother learned that the best home for Baba is one with her family, even if it is in a world that is rough. And Hilda's best life is with her mother, even if it isn't as adventurous as she'd like. But both are given the opportunity to share in each other's lives, with Baba coming to visit Hilda and Trollberg, and Hilda going out to play with Baba and her mother, getting to enjoy the outside with the safety of a troll guardian. All in all, it was a pretty great movie, and I'm curious to see where Season 3 goes with its final arc. Hilda and the Mountain King was the last of the Hilda comics available for adaptation, so Season 3 will be an entirely new story, and based on Season 2's new stories that weren't based off of comics, I think the writers will be able to do an amazing job by expanding on the world of the comics and giving us something new. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, though, and we'll see what happens in Season 3. See you guys then!